1952, uh, with funds from the March of Dimes, Jonas Salk made the first uh, polio vaccine. And I would say prevention of polio is probably one of the most important advances in the history of medicine. On April 12, 1955, when after a very big national trial, his vaccine was shown to actually prevent polio, uh, he became the hero of my generation. And uh, I was always kind of puzzled uh, about a couple of things. Uh, first, he, he was beloved by the public, but he was kind of snubbed by the scientific community. And I also wondered, having reached acclaim at age 40, what did he do for an encore? It, it's interesting that a historian once asked Jonas Salk what he wanted his biographer to write about him, and he said the truth. Uh, but he didn't make that very easy because after he became so famous, he kind of constructed this protective shield around himself, um, making it really difficult to understand the paradoxes and the questions surrounding his life. He, he was a man who uh, really hated uh, confrontation, and yet he was surrounded by controversy everywhere he went. Uh, he was a man who really wanted to be accepted, and yet he challenged the the prevailing norms with kind of an unremitting tenacity. So uh, really just totally burdened by his celebrity, Jonas saw, sought a refuge. And he had always dreamed of uh, developing a utopia uh, where scientists and humanists work side by side, as he said, imbuing uh, the sciences with the conscience of man. And, and that made it unique to begin with. It was based on a uh, book by Sir Charles Percy Snow, uh, which was very controversial at the time, called Two Cultures. So with uh, millions of dollars provided by Basil O'Connor, who was the director of the uh, March of Dimes, or the National Foundation for Infantile Paralysis, he uh, erected this Louis Kahn architectural masterpiece in La Jolla, California, on the cliffs overlooking the Pacific Ocean. And there he was able to attract uh, a cadre of, of brilliant scientists and scholars by offering them something uh, that other institutes didn't, and that was uh, lifetime funding as uh, well as uh, total academic freedom. But even that uh, didn't turn out to be the, the refuge that Jonas Salk was hoping for. Uh, he faced numerous problems that probably would have felled an average man, I think. Um, he had a, a dreaming, maverick kind of architect who spent more time uh, actually planning and dreaming than drawing. Uh, Salk's own uh, inept administrative skills that kept him from uh, being able to manage the institute and uh, it seemed to always be on the brink of uh, bankruptcy. Uh, a later president of the institute who said he could raise more money with Salk dead than alive and eventually deposal by these colleagues for whom he had built uh, this utopia. Um, so in the end, uh, science dominated the institute and there was only a little thread of humanity. Uh, some think of that as really uh, his most painful legacy, even though the Salk Institute is considered one of the premier institutes in the world today.